Hey, what's going on everybody? <sighs> Hold on. They'd be a smudge on the screen. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your favorite introvert here. Today, we got the DJI Mavic 2 Pro here. We're gonna be mapping this home. Uh, as you see behind me, we're gonna do a little bit of extra stuff other than mapping. We're gonna also get some 3D uh, photo scans in for drone deploy so we can showcase what type of deliverables for 3D uh, you can get out of drone deploy. Good crispy oblique photos out of your scans. And um, we're also gonna be uh, scanning about 40 plus acres of soybean field. So we have that going for us as well. Stick with me, we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna learn something. Let's talk about setup real quick. I have my phone set up as a Wi-Fi hotspot so my iPad can connect to drone deploy and get a good let me fix the lighting real quick all right so we can get a good idea of what's going on with drone deploy I have my remote there it is not connected yet to the drone the drone is not turned on but uh, RC connected, iPad for monitoring the flight situation and monitoring the mission, and my phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot so my iPad can connect. Yes, I am in my car, the AC is running, and out there, out there is the home that we are mapping. So I have full line of sight all the way down to the tree line and back so we can monitor the flight and that's a good thing um, well yeah sitting in the air condition of a vehicle is a great thing while you're mapping also being able to have eyes on um, have eyes on your drone as it's flying is a great thing and you have to have it for compliance with the FAA part 107 uh, regulation so that uh, satisfies that point as well so with that being said uh, let's put the bird up in the air we're gonna fly the mission we're gonna kind of show uh, what happens when the mission is in flight and uh, we'll go from there Once you have everything configured, your map is planned out. As you can see, it draws out the map plan right there. The next thing that makes sense is you hit the button. It'll do its automated checks, make sure everything is jiving with the drone and that the drone deploy software can connect to the drone and camera as well as control it. You'd have to make sure that your controller stays connected to the cable to your iPad or whichever device you're using to map. And once you get all the green check marks, you will see this button here glowing. You press it and away your drone goes. Up, up in the air and away. All right, it goes to pre-designated altitude and it'll start scanning. All right, while the drone is in flight, you can watch it as it goes about its course right now it's heading to the first checkpoint my camera is on and connected you're seeing a live view from the camera right there as it goes there we go so each stutter in the camera is a frame that the camera takes a picture so you'll see it as it's driving along it'll kind of stutter that's when the camera is actually taking its picture and depending on how you set it up you may get a live view capture uh, as the drone is taking pictures, a live view will pop up on the map. I think I have that functionality turned off because it's too much data going back and forth from the drone. Um, it just saturates the network and it doesn't do a great job anyway. So I have turned that off. So it's gonna do its passes on the 40 acres and then I'm gonna show you the next step that I take. All right, so we're gonna start from the top. The top of the menu right there is your battery. Below it is your camera count, how many photos have been taken. Below that is your altitude above ground. That's your pre-designated spot. So you, I have it set to 200 feet, so it should be flying at that. Below it is the speed, and this is interchangeable. You can do it miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Below it is distance from the home point. So that's how far the drone is away from where you've taken off. And below it is the time in flight. So that's the total flight time from when the mission has started. So you have your mission counter. We can go here and we can focus in on where the drone is at. All right, so the drone is coming back to us from its first leg. 
we are monitoring the battery life as we're going. This is going to be a two battery flight, so it takes about one and a quarter battery, so we're going to have to come back for a battery swap, but that's not a problem. We'll just pause the mission, swap batteries, and continue. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, as you see, we're about to make the end of this run here. We have 35% battery. And uh, typically what I like to do is I like to wait for the drone to enter into its transition from one flight path to the next in transition here. And I will punch the return to home button. That way the camera isn't actively taking photos because I don't want any skip or any missed shots. Even though I have the overlap set uh, well above um, what is necessary but it's in transition now I'm going to tap the return to home button since we are needing to change batteries and uh, as it returns home it stops returns home and it lands and then once you power back on we'll be able to continue the mission where it left off without having any issues with missed photos there it is coming home In its landing phase of 200 feet. It should return to home exactly where it took off. And obviously, since it kicked up a bunch of dust, you're going to want to clean the camera off before you take it off again. So. If you don't have one of these, I recommend getting you one. Uh, essentially, it just blows the dust off the glass, so that way you're not scratching the glass, potentially scratching your uh, your ND filters. You don't want to do that. You don't want to scratch any scratch glass is bad glass, so let's not do that. All right, we definitely got dust on it. So what we're gonna do? Do a little blow there. Cleans it up. Cleans it up nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and swap batteries. Got a battery right here. Got batteries right here. Got the battery changed. The drone is back outside. And all we have to do is continue the flight. And we'll go through the checks again. And press go. And there it goes. So it already has a path calculated out back to the waypoint and it will continue on its mission. Almost finished up the first leg of the scanning mission. Once it completes this I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to show you kind of what I do to get better 3D scans from drone deploy. So it's done now. It's returning to home. Go in here you can see that it's coming back home. You can cancel it out. Now you're good to go. Enter back into drone deploy. You see right there, it's kind of just standing by. So you want to exit out of drone deploy. Go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna close all these out while I'm at it. Close it out, reopen it. And it should come to, there we go. Go back into your no, I don't want to continue. Meanwhile, your drone is still hovering in place. So there's the mission. Right there. If I want to fly, go back into my map two plan. As you can see, we have a different plan. It's still going to be scanning but this time it's going to be an actual 3d scan the other one was just a 2d scan and this one is going to be for structures mode which you can see here so that tick mark is for structures mode the altitude is 80 feet if you want to see the advanced settings i have i have overlap of 75 percent side overlap of 65 percent and i've changed the direction just a little bit with the mapping speed and but the majority of this is automatic and i do have 
automatically set exposure uh, set here. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go ahead and punch that button there. We're gonna get all the green status lights as it's still hovering. Now you have to make sure you're gonna have enough battery to complete this mission once you do. You launch it and you send it. Right now it's reducing its altitude from 200 feet to 80 feet and then it's gonna make its way towards the mission point. At this time, if you notice, the camera is black now. I'm not sure if that is an issue with the Drone Deploy app or if that's just an issue for me backing out, closing it, and then opening the DJI Go 4 app. I'm not sure, haven't been able to figure out. The photos still take, and if you wanna see that the photos are still taking, you can back out and go into the DJI map again and you can actually watch it as it goes through and takes photos. And I do this often, I go back and forth between apps. If I discover like the camera app is crashed in the drone deploy app, uh, I'll come back to the DJI app and monitor it that way. Um, I just like to see what's going on through the camera, making sure that it's taking pictures, making sure that the exposure is properly set and I'm not extremely blowing out the highlights. The majority of the time I do it manually. I'll set exposure manually, especially on bright, clear, sunny days. Uh, it's good to set exposure manually. Uh, that way you have the best settings overall. And uh, the settings, camera settings is, you know, up to you, but I essentially like to keep it around uh, F7 or F8. Right now it's at 6.3, and then you have to keep a fast shutter speed. Uh, where this one is around 1 1 60th so and again these are all manual settings you'll see it change every once in a while if the uh, the lighting is different if you go in and out of clouds you'll see it change drastically and that could potentially cause issue with your your upload and your stitching it'll make your stitching look a little weird all right so we're letting it finish up it does its different altitudes now drone deploy has kind of tweaked their uh, tweak the way that they handle scanning homes at least but uh, I'm gonna show you one trick that I kind of do in addition to this and it's actually in the DJI app you'll figure it out it's pretty simple and it'll be like a little aha moment for you but uh, this is kind of one step extra that I add and provide so there it's done so now we can go ahead and cancel it all right we're gonna leave it there we have 38 percent battery left which isn't enough to do it so uh let's bring it back in for a battery change all right so filming this from the side angle here what we're going to want to do is we want to go over to the midpoint of the home as you can see i've changed my selection to point of interest mode so i'm in point of interest mode coming over to roughly the center of the home right here and I'm gonna set that as the point of interest so we're gonna back up reduce our altitude a little bit and we're gonna make sure that we get the entirety of our home into frame all right now once we have that we're gonna set our speed a little bit faster than 2.2 so I'm gonna do 4.2 we're gonna get our finger on the camera button of the remote, and we're gonna press that go button. So we're gonna take photos as it keeps the home in point of interest mode. As you're doing this you're also gonna to have to remember and keep in mind that you need to keep your eye on the drone so if there's obstacles like I have a tree line that it's gonna stay away from but it's still something to consider and keep in mind uh, what your hazards are again in the middle of the field on the opposite side of this house right now I have a power pole with a transformer so that's gonna be another obstacle and safety consideration that I need to keep in mind so as it circles the home, I'm going to need to have bearing on where the drone is. I 
also have to keep in mind that it may hit the garage so we'll have to be ready to raise the altitude and although it doesn't look like it there's plenty of room between the drone and the garage all right so I'm going to pause that it's made its complete circle around the home and now I'm going to focus on getting some shots at the garage now keep in mind this doesn't have to be perfect there's already some data and there's already some photos of the home in general as well as the garage but I like to add a few more photos for for the warm and fuzzy feelings all right so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the flying and photo part of it now we're going to jump into the studio and jump on the computer and we're going to upload these to drone deploy and we're going to check out the results now to the easy part simply log into your dashboard and select the project used for your image capture for this project since we are wanting a 3d image we will make sure we have structures mode selected with that slider selected, we will make sure all the images captured from the different map plans all get uploaded as one. This will ensure all photos are processed on the same map and ensure a better quality result. Once all the photos are uploaded, the drone deploy software will start aligning and stitching the data. This process usually takes several hours depending on the number of photos uploaded. Once complete, you will receive an email that your project is ready to view and can now see what your 3D structure looks like. Though the automated stitching process is not perfect and there is not many ways to change the images in the completed project, it is amazing how much detail is in the completed map. You can go in and add more photos in the map details and have the project reworked. There's also the option to crop areas that you may not want to see. Overall, it's a very informative tool to use in data collection and helps assist builders and land developers. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, saw what Drone Deploy has been working on and some of their latest and greatest features as far as 3D uh, capture of your properties and uh, mapping as well. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share if you will. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider doing so. But again, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.